Hey YouTube and welcome back to the channel. This episode we're going to be concentrating on 1911 barrels. Now, the 1911 barrel is a very overlooked part in my opinion in the factory. Um, they don't give it the attention required in order to make it a little bit better in quality as far as feeding and reliability on the pistol. Now, we're going to address this problem very simply by chamfering the mouth of the chamber. We're going to do this by using a series of different Kratex burrs and sanding drums in order to achieve the angle and roll over that edge just to give it a slight chamfer to help it assist in feeding the ammunition from the magazines. Now, you just got to go slow and make sure you're not going into the chamber as we're not trying to remove any material or hog out any material to make it any wider or deeper or modify it in any other way other than just giving that slight chamfer on that chamber mouth. Now doing this modification will improve feeding related issues with this type of pistol, especially when using hollow points or any of the new odd shaped rounds that are out in the market, but it will not always fix all the feeding issues. Sometimes you will have to adjust your magazines for proper feeding angles and your extractor for proper tension. And yes, I said your extractor, because in very rare cases, the extractor can be adjusted too tightly and will cause failures to feed. In this condition, the face head is not allowed to travel up into the breech face because the rim of the cartridge never becomes fully seated under the extractor hook. Excessive extractor tension can also cause the extractor to dig into the cartridge rim, which is made of brass. This will cause inconsistent feeding or intermittent feeding problems, but more on this in future videos. Now the name of the game here is called patience and you need a lot of it when you're working on firearms. Go slow and take your time as this isn't a race and messing up will cost you money. What we're trying to achieve here is a smooth transition between the chamber mouth and the feed ramp. We want everything to be as smooth as possible. Take your time and try to get your chamber mouth as even as possible on each side. We're going for a half moon shaped chamfer on each side. So remember, we aren't trying to remove any material, we're just trying to break the edges, essentially rolling over those sharp edges of the chamber mouth. Okay guys, so here's a little update on what we've done so far. We chamfered the entrance of the chamber slightly, okay? We didn't go into the chamber because we're not trying to widen it or take away material from this because we don't want to remove material from the chamber where it supports the casing because if we do so we will start getting cracked casings as we won't have any supports on it remember when you fire around the case expands into the chamber walls and then contracts again extractor pulls it out and ejects it from the firearm so all we really did was just break up that edge so we can better assist or remedy the feeding issues that these guns typically have sometimes okay so let's suppose this is the round okay the round typically nose dives into the feed ramp and rides up into the chamber but that's not always the case sometimes the round will nose dive into the side of the chambers and that's where we'll get caught up and have that failure to feed because it will catch on that edge which is normally sharp so that's what we remedy by chamfering the edges of the chamber now we're not going deep inside we're just giving it a slight little angle in order to just roll over that edge so let's say the round comes up at an angle now it, when it nose dives against that edge that rounded corner will help it guide it back into the chamber so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna polish up the feed ramp we're gonna polish up these chamfers that we did on the barrel chamber and we're gonna polish the inside of our throat now we're going to polish the inside of our throat because we want to make it easier for our extractor to pull out the rounds once they've been fired. It makes it a lot smoother as we shoot the pistol, make it more efficient, less drag and less wear on our parts. All right, so let's get to that. All right, guys, so for polishing, I normally like to use this Brownells Polish All Ray, um, the 555 Gray. Now this is a great product, it's a fine compound. It does a great job at polishing that in combination with some felt bobs i mean you could get these in different assortments of sizes and shapes 
they do a great job in polishing metal, um, especially uh, small parts. But for bigger parts, obviously, buffing wheel, some different compounds, or even this same compound will help. Uh, but for this job, we're going to be using the small felt pod bobs or small felt bobs and some polish already. So let's get to this. So what you want to do is you want to just get a little bit on here to coat it and start working. Okay, so the main reason we chamfered the mouth on our chamber was for odd rounds. Now, it doesn't have to be specifically these rounds, but anything with hollow points, uh, as some people call them, flying ashtrays, because they look like an ashtray, basically those hollow points. Um, that will, this will aid for those feeding issues, because now it can do a nose dive, glide right in, can try to do a stove pipe that polished surface help it glide right in um, it can go in at a canted angle now since we don't have a sharp edge anymore it will assist in the round gliding into the chamber so this doesn't fix all the the problems but it does give it a sort of fix to the issue um, this in combination with fixing the magazine lip angles so we have a different angle of feeding into the chamber will help correct the problem now this is the first step where we're fixing or addressing the issue of the barrel um, we try it out see if it works if it keeps on giving issues then we move on to the magazine and adjust the magazines for the feed angle now this is a great upgrade for any 1911 barrel for uh, issues with feeding um, if, if, if it tends to just the rounds get stuck either nose dive stove pipes or get stuck like that um, get stuck sideways at an angle I mean this is a great solution because you're rounding off those edges you're giving it less possibilities for the rounds to get stuck on those sharp edges or snag on those rough surfaces so this modification will help you resolve a few of those issues with feeding. Um, as you can tell, smooth, less friction, everything's nicely polished. I mean, zero effort whatsoever. You know, this is, this is what you want. Well guys, I hope you liked this video. As always, I'll post links below on all the tools that we used and where you can find them. Um, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Always remember to subscribe and keep up to date with our projects and how-tos. And uh, see you next time.